what's up guys make sure you first of all leave a like on the video and subscribe if this is your first time on the channel because this is crazy today i'm going to be showing you guys how to make thumbnails for absolutely zero dollars you don't need to spend any money on any type of editing software photoshop or anything on cinema 4d it's completely free all you need to buy is minecraft and if you already have minecraft then you should be good to go so today we're going to be using a paint.net which is a free software that you can use to make thumbnails and it is very similar to photoshop and the quality of it is almost to the point of photoshop so i'll put the link to where you can download paint.net from their official website and i'll also put a link to all the plugins that you need for paint.net as well as well as the mods that you need to get the screenshots necessary for this thumbnail so without further ado let's get right to the tutorial now, lots of people have been asking me to make a paint.net tutorial so i finally decided to do it so this is what we're going to be making and it looks like you made it in photoshop but we didn't make it in photoshop this is all paint Net. And paint.net has been doing a great job in upgrading and stuff to the point where if you don't have hundreds of dollars to buy photoshop which is definitely the case unless you unfortunately pirate it do what you want because a pirate is free you are a pirate you are a pirate being a pirate is a recipe that's also uh, something you can do but I'm, I am not condoning that you should you should not pirate stuff and I hit my boom arm again in order to start first of all you're obviously gonna open up Minecraft and we're going to be using the custom NPCs mod which would be the re replacement of cinema 4d and the world downloader mod link to those mods will be in the description the world downloader mod takes a while to explain but I already have the world downloaded and I named it bed wars so we are going to be using a bed wars map as the background so i use the world downloader mod to install the world and i'm currently using the lively faithful texture pack so that everywhere has this nice green color specifically the glass the grass not the glass i set the fov to 70 which is normal and i set the render distance to six so that it is easier to get rid of the sky background and put our own custom sky background in paint.net okay so once you have the custom npcs mod successfully installed it should have this tab that says custom npc tools and what you're going to do is drag this npc one which i already have and just right click we're gonna uh, right click it here so it's going to be a person trying to mine this obsidian with a diamond pickaxe so let me actually get the diamond pickaxe as well so that we don't need to keep on going back and forth and I already have the gear that we're going to give him so just right click the ground right here you should pop up now name make sure you press set it to hide so that that name isn't showing in the screenshot um, has a living animation doesn't matter what you set this to but I'm just gonna set it to no now we're going to go to the third tab which is the AI tab and go all the way to the bottom left where it says movement click edit and the animation will be normal now where it says rotation and body click it so it's manual and we're gonna change the direction he's facing in degrees you know the zero to 360 degrees so since he's facing this way we want him to turn 45 degrees so that he's just turning towards the obsidian and that should update once we come out of here now we're going to go into the inventory and we're just going to take this stuff as if it were your inventory and give it to him we're going to give him leather and just like in bed wars we're going to give him the iron leggings and boots if you get the upgrade and of course, we're going to give him the diamond pickaxe. Now put it in the slot that has the sword, which should be his main slot. Once we do that, we're going to go to the advanced. And from here, you're going to go where it says no job and click the left arrow three times. So it says puppet. Once you have it selected to puppet, click edit. And we're just going to make his head tilt down. Nothing special so that it's just, you know, looking looking at the obsidian that he's mining just like if you were the one mining it so we're just gonna move this to the, to the right 
not too much i'd say 220 it's all right 220 within that range and we're also going to make his right arm extend with the pickaxe of course so i believe move it to the left and 111 percent or 98 percent should be good of course we can always make adjustments if it's not right oh yeah that looks all right so it looks like he's mining the obsidian now i would make him sneak shifting but for some reason the custom npcs has been a little bit buggy i would make him look weird so this is all you need to do and of course we already have the obsidian placed around the bed and yeah this is our screenshot now uh hit f1 and we're going to get to the right position always feel free to take more than one screenshot just in case and now we're going to hit f2 once everything seems right okay and just like that we have our screenshot now you can close out of minecraft if you want i'm just gonna click save and quit quit the title now we're going to open up our paint.net i already have mine opened up we're gonna go all the way here to the top left click file click new and now we're going to change our dimensions so that it fits youtube's requirements i'm gonna put i think it's 1280 i don't i usually do 1920 by 1080 but it makes a big a large file size so it's been a while so that's why i'm not remembering at the moment all right so it is 1280 by 720 hopefully i'm not wrong that would be very embarrassing once you change the dimensions here click ok and first of all it gives you this white background so i think we can yeah just uncheck it or we could, i think we can delete it no you can't or you could just click the rectangle select all the way up here and drag it across the screen hit delete and after we do that we can get our sky background so it's different from photoshop you can actually drag and drop with which makes it a lot easier so i got my uh my file explorer tab here open up. i'm actually gonna put it on my second monitor so that it's a little less it doesn't take up much of the screen so i got my sky background and i'm just gonna drag it here just like that make sure whenever you drag and drop you click add layer so that you can edit it and we got our sky background right here so you have it just press enter and should load in just like that and we can go into the effects all the way to the right go to where it says photo and then click glow and that way it'll make the sky background look very very bright and you can change it if you want change brightness i think i'm gonna set it to zero and you can change it contrast as well i don't know what the radius does oh so so that's what it does it looks at make look more dreamy or dreamier so i guess that's it's part of the glow thing i really like that effect as well i don't think well it's more complicated to do in photoshop but it makes it easier on paint.net so the next thing we're gonna do is get that last screenshot that we just got of the person mining the bed in the bed wars map and the reason why i chose this to be the background is because bed wars is a trendy thing i didn't want to be generic like everyone else and just put a shaders background and get the cinema 4d because that costs money the cinema 4d cost money and we're trying to do this free okay so we got our screenshot here as always make sure you click it to say add layer hit enter and now we're going to go down to the fourth from the top in the tools i'm going to click the magic wand look at that just like the magic wand in adobe photoshop and now we can just start clicking anywhere and pressing delete so that it deletes the sky and so that the more visually appealing sky in the background is revealed so so just start by clicking anywhere then press delete do it again just keep on repeating the process these skinny lines were are the hardest i forgot how to zoom in on paint.net so i should really figure out how to do that but just keep doing it and you should be fine Alright, so I believe we have deleted everything. So after we do this, 
we can add the drop shadow to the background like we usually do in our Photoshop thumbnails. So we're going to go to effects, go all the way down to object and drop shadow. Click that. And you can copy down the settings that you have right here. And I think I'm going to adjust one of them actually. I think the opacity, change the opacity. All right, so copy that down. Shadow opacity 177 and everything else. Make sure the shadow color is set to black, of course. And after that, just press OK. Now, I made a mistake. I should have set the graphics in your Minecraft settings to fast so that there's no holes in the leaves. And that's starting to really um, bite me in a bad place. Like, look at that. That looks. Ah. All right, so just moral of the story make sure. You always remember to set your graphics uh, fast whenever you're taking shooting shots with thumbnail. But moving on to the next step. Now what we're going to do is um, add our text, I guess. And we're very close to being done. Like this, is, this has gone by really fast. So click the T, the text icon, which is near the bottom. And just click anywhere on your screen. I have the font size set to 192, but you can always readjust the size if, you're, if you want to. And we're just gonna type in something random. I don't know. Let's just type in wow. Hopefully wow. I didn't use wow the last tutorial, otherwise I'm gonna look repetitive. And after we do that, and click finish. And I'm going to drag Whoa. Always remember to make a new layer before you add the text. Otherwise, you're done. Alright, so we're gonna go here all the way at the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see where it says add a new layer. And it's just like this white box with a green plus icon at the bottom of the corner. So click that and now click anywhere on the screen. And we're just gonna type in wow with an exclamation point. Click finish. So we have our wow. we're going to give it a gradient. It's a pretty simple way, but it takes a lot more steps in paint.net. So we're going to go to the magic wand tool again. We're gonna hold down shift and click on the text. And now we're going to go here with the gradient, which is on the right and I believe fifth from the top. And now we're going to hold shift again. We're going to drag down, drag down, keep on dragging down. And we have the nice orange gradient, which I do love. After we have that gradient, you can press enter. And of course you can copy down the colors that I have from here. I don't know how to show you the exact color code. I wish I did. But just just choose set the base color as a dark orange and then the gradient color as a nice white orange like this. Just like this. So that's I wish I wish I could show you the actual color code. But after you do that, hit enter. And now it looks a little jagged in Photoshop, which is a problem. I don't know how to correct that but we're gonna have to deal with it. Hopefully you get, it doesn't bother you guys as much. How do we do that? We're gonna go back to effects, go down to object once more, click drop shadow. And this drop shadow is gonna be a very thick drop shadow. So we're going to set the opacity to a very high number. 255 is the highest and widening radius. Just gonna raise the widening radius. Not too much though. So I'd say stop at 20, 20 seems good. And you can change the blur radius if you want to make it so that it doesn't look too sharp. So I'd say set that to 20 as well. And just copy down these settings once again, just pause the video right now and copy them down. Once you're done with that, hit okay. And now we can go back to the move selected pixels tool and just drag this here. And the awesome thing about paint.net is when you drag something, it automatically brings out the transformation box thing. So we can just click outside the screen and drag it so that we tilt it a little. Tilt it, not too much. How do you do that? Just drag it right here. Right here seems good. And hit enter. It's looking good so far. I'm liking it. I'm liking it very much. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to add an arrow pointing to the bed being broken. So I'm just going to drag it out right now. This is optional as well. So I'm just going to drag it here. It's a 
nice red arrow so we're going to change side hold shift and drag one of the corners so that you maintain the proportions that seems good now we're going to rotate it this way and move it so that's a little outside of the actual thumbnail just like that okay and hit enter now we're going to go back to effects go back to object and go to outline object outline the width you can set it to 13 the color white of course and what's doing that okay not that much to it and if you want you can also add another drop shadow to this as well so go back to object drop shadow and it should automatically set in just like that and you can of course lower the radius if it's too wide for your liking and hit okay after you copy these down boom looking good it looks a lot like we've done this in photoshop so that shows that you don't need to spend money to make great thumbnails now what i was like now what i was thinking is going back to the screenshot that we have always remember to select the background that you want to add the effect on go back to effects and let's see what happens if we add a glow like i'm just experimenting okay it looks very bright now but i feel like if we lower the radius so that it doesn't have that dreamy look and then we lower the brightness contrast the contrast you know this is actually looking pretty good oh snap yo glow effect for the win it's still looking a little too bright though so let's just lower that and then okay so feel free to play experiment with these and see what you like so radius one for me negative 69 for the brightness and negative 22 for the contrast hit okay when you're done wow that looks amazing this is great all right ladies and gentlemen and we're pretty much done look at this and i'm just i figured out that you can zoom out with the bottom right corner here how could i miss this or the whole 20 minutes of recording so you drag it to the left zoom out all right so this is like a nice image of the thumbnail a wide view angle of the thumbnail and it looks pretty good leave a like if you think this is good so this is how you guys make thumbnails with paint.net it is free no cinema 4d is required either look at this like if i could do a side-by-side -side comparison right now with a photoshop tutorial and paint.net tutorial i would have a hard time differentiating between the two so if you guys want to see more paint.net tutorials uh, comment down any suggestions you have in the comment section down below leave a like and subscribe if this is your first time on the channel help us get to 10,000 subscribers and you can do that by subscribing today and sharing this video with anyone who has had trouble getting money for photoshop cinema 4d or just needed some inspiration or help in making thumbnails so thank you all so much for watching have an awesome day i'll see you guys in the next tutorial Talk to you guys later. Peace.